All right, guys, we're back today to replace the control board in this train furnace from the other video, the S9X. So, oh, it doesn't really take a whole lot. Everything on these is kind of just plug and play. You can't mess anything up. Everything has to plug back to the same place. You can't mess it up. So she said it happened uh, probably four or five more times. You know, we were just here yesterday morning when we diagnosed it. So we got the power off. And so everybody's seen a board replacement, but I just thought I would do a quick video on this furnace or the S9 platform as far as doing repairs and fixing things obviously this is a convertible furnace you can do right left up flow not mistaken down flow I'd have to go look it's been six years I think since I took the class on this furnace but I'll explain all that to you in just a minute let me get this board popped off of here but basically I'm sure there's some other furnaces that do it as well but you have different setup diagrams in the awesome install manual for this thing different openings places to run wires drain hoses uh, your exhaust your inlet your outlet that drain goes different directions um, but basically you just whatever direction you install this unit whether it's horizontal right left up flow down flow you basically are just going to turn this inducer motor you're going to flip it and adjust it reconnect your hoses base that's why you have all these spare ports on this motor here drain for your flu all these different ports you basically would just rearrange your hoses reattach them based on which airflow direction you're installing this once you turn this motor and remount it to however it's supposed to go based on the direction you're running right left up down and then you reconnect different drain hoses to different locations these things come out in different lengths in a lot of cases and you'll cut them to length to connect them where you need to connect them so it's a very versatile furnace for the most part um, getting the blower out of this thing and I really don't these little clips I hold these boards on it's almost like I really don't need to send new ones unless I'm just taking them off wrong it's easier to get the board off which clips off the board and then to pop them out of here I probably should have done that instead and just pop the board to the original clips but anyway and then we'll get them lined up switch and sensors and rollouts and temperature limits low voltage out and then we'll get the equipment tied back in but 
this panel basically comes out. You see all the screws. Most of the older units, everything was flush. Of course, most furnaces don't always have a door that covers the blower. Train's famous for it. But uh, take this plug off here. There's obviously your door switch is down there. Um, you can troubleshoot through this switch. Uh, there is another limit sensor in there and a reverse direction limit or some something. I'd have to look up what they call that. I don't remember it off the top of my mind. But basically once you get this door off, the blower is in there on rails, the housing. It just slides right out. Heat exchanger is the same way. Replacing the heat exchanger once you get this stuff apart and get it off. You've got to see it's not all flat just as close as it is to the to the cabinet it's a built-in frame so once you get these screws out all the way around that heat exchanger that's in there will actually just slide right out on rails and just slide out we have the new one it rolls slides right back in there and obviously that's the face plate the face panel of it but it comes with this flu box cover is already on it from the factory as far as the heat exchanger goes um, but yeah once you get all this off of it and get these screws out around the outside edge it just slides right out the new one slides right in now you can do a heat exchanger on one of these things and have it back up and running in probably about an hour and 15 minutes uh, uh, maybe I don't know just depends hour 15 minutes hour and a half if you're just taking your time that's how kind of quick and easy this thing comes apart I haven't had to replace one yet they haven't been out that long and if they're already having cracked heat exchangers in them by now then oh well I guess it wasn't a good product but I took the class on them and they said they brought in uh, I don't know 15 or so technicians from different places and they got their input on what they wanted to see out of a furnace as far as being service friendly rather than just going and coming up with whatever design they were going to come up with and throwing it out there they actually brought in got basically had had a big basically a greet and meet with a lot of technicians and spent several days hammering out what they wanted to see what would be easy to work on more convenient simple and that was basically how they designed or where they got their design from on this unit was input after having meetings with technicians from different companies uh, where those companies were i don't know couldn't answer that question for you but at least that's what they told us when when we took the class so I guess that's nice to know but yeah it's not it's not a not a bad furnace get this thing on my wires back in there much it so we're going oh, one of my commons came loose This is a single stage furnace and we are breaking our through the condensate pump and that SS2 switch over there on the secondary drain we always put a 
of safety on our secondary drains. Obviously her crawl space where this furnace is. See where that pipe goes out over there. It was going to be really difficult to get a drain grade off of that thing. So we just went ahead and ran it to a condensate pump. I think the unit that was here before did the same thing. So and we're hanging on Unistrut. We're not using blocks. So there you go. Um, eh, I'm 50-50 about Unistrut. The basements are somewhere like that, but it just seems like maybe there's an issue with noise transfer there or something. I don't know. I'd rather it be on blocks, isolated from the structure, but uh, there's no noise transfer or anything like that, but it works. We don't have, haven't had that problem yet, but it was always a first. Anyway, let's get this thing on and uh, give her a call real quick. Let her know she can go ahead and turn the thermostat on and... We'll watch this thing run a little bit. I sure hope this fixes the problem. Like I said. Yeah, you can go ahead and turn it on. Turn it up three, four degrees above indoor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Like I said, it, it wasn't showing any fault codes. No matter what it did. So, we'll see if that fixed it. The only thing that really convinced me to go ahead and call the board was when I was wiggling this and pushing on it the board would click and it shut off on me one time and you know, all these all those wires are in there tight so The S9V is the same way. Um, then you're going to go to your two stage versions. Your variable speed is obviously your S9V, but uh, not a bad furnace. So I'm going to watch this thing a little while. We're going to see what happens. Blower just clicked, blower's coming on. So I'm going to have to go in here real quick and set up. I'm going to run it in that TP5 airflow right now. See what happens. But I'm going to have to go back in here and set it up for our AC tonnage outside cooling airflow. Actually, I don't have to set it for tonnage on this one. Um, variable speed is going to ask for CFMs per ton, then what size your system is, and then it will make the calculation for your airflow. This has got the X13 in it, so you're just going to set a dip switch on that. Really anything in there, I have to go change. So it seems like it's running okay. And uh, it's just one of those you, you kind of hope they don't call back. I hope you're right. But I would just think when this thing was shutting off and doing what it was doing, it was a pressure switch opening or something along those lines, it would have shown me that fault. Or most especially when I got here yesterday and when I got here today, she said it was short cycling on and off, stood on and off again this morning. Nothing's going out on lockout. So it's not having retry attempts, failures, and then going out on a lockout like it's supposed to. So anyway, guys, that's going to wind this one up. And, uh, one of those you just hope you were right. Um, I'm about 90% positive. But uh, you can never be 100% right, in my opinion. Uh, unless you find a compressor shorted to ground, a bad capacitor that's blown, or a seized blower motor, <laughs> for the most part. The contactor stuck shut, things like that. But with these furnaces, sometimes they can play with you. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. They can trick you once in a while. So anyway, guys, 
have a good one and uh, see you next time around right hand corner if you want to like subscribe appreciate it and uh, see what other other videos I can come up with some other information get back on maybe some of that XV training uh, still digging around in that trying to figure a good way to do that but anyway guys thanks for watching and uh, see you on the other side